that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Ahoy there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review charge by BoardGameExchange.com. You know, it's only board game rental website. Today, I'm very excited to be checking out a special Kickstarter review for Conquest of Orion from Escape Velocity Games. This is for four players. It'll take about an hour to play. It's for ages 12 and up. And in Conquest of Orion, you are going to be trying to take tricks by fighting through the galaxy, by laying down uh, planets and colonies and industries, and having spaceships that do special things and having leader abilities that will do very, very unique things that will flip the entire game on its head. Uh, very intriguing premise for a game. Let's open it up and see how it plays. Okay, so inside a Conquest of Orion, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get. As I always like to stress, this is a promotional copy of the game. Your copy is probably not going to have faceless leaders, and he said he's going to work on the graphic design and do some other minor tweaks here and there, so just always want to mention that. First and foremost in the game, you're going to get your handy-dandy rule booklet. It's two pages, double-sided, full color. It is very, very nice. It will teach you exactly how to play the game. You'll probably come back to it once or twice when you play. But other than that, you're probably not going to use it too many times because it is a pretty simple game to learn. Next, you're going to be getting cards. You're going to get a bunch of cards. There's going to be five types of cards in the entire game. You're going to have your planets, which will have uh, little planet symbols on them. Uh, you're going to have colonies. You're going to have industries, which are the red, the orange, and the blue. And then you're going to have the ships. Now, these are going to be green, and these are going to serve us as the trump cards of the game. If you're not uh, familiar with what a trump card is, that essentially means that these are the big mamma jammas of the game. These are the best cards to have. Because, well, let's, let's just say, when, you're, when it's your turn, you're each going to lay a card down from your hand. So let's say this is what everybody laid. This guy laid a 3, this guy laid a 6, this guy laid a 9. And these cards are all pretty much the same, these three. The, uh, the planets, the colonies, and the industries, these cards are all on the same level playing field. But the ship, they go above that. So right now, we got a 3, a 6, and a 9. So right now, this guy is winning with his 9 planet. But... This guy lays down a four ship, which instantly means he is going to win this hand. Now, if this were a one ship, he would still win. No matter what card he lays that's green, he's going to win this hand. Now, you might notice there's some writing on the bottom of the ships. That's because each ship is going to have you its own unique, special thing that's going to happen. So this one says, this card, when you play it, is instantly going to destroy the Annihilator. Now, the Annihilator is the biggest card in the game. It is the 11 ships, so it's the biggest number of ships. So if you have that card, you essentially, every time, are going to get at least one point. Unless, of course, someone plays this four, which instantly destroys the Annihilator. So this might be a card you want to hold on to until someone plays the Annihilator. But you want to worry, because if somebody plays the Annihilator and you have this as the only card you have left, you might have to destroy your teammate's Annihilator, because it is a team game. These two guys will be playing together, and these two guys will be playing together. But those are the four kind of cards you're going to have in your hand. Last, you're going to have a card face up in front of you that is called the Leader card. Uh, these are, whew, this is where the game really gets spicy because there's going to be 10 different leaders. You're going to know what everybody's leader is. Uh, what's going to happen is they're going to put them out there. You're going to put two in the middle randomly. So we have our politician over here who will always be in the middle. He'll always be a choice that you have. And then you're going to have your explorer right here, which is a random one. But let's just take a look at what the politician does. If you won no conflicts or wars this round, you personally, you're going to score 25 points at the end of this round, which is a good chunk of points. And you also get to take one card out of your hand and give it to your team made and they're going to do vice versa so most likely you would probably take this invasion fleet out because it's a 10 it's a ship it's the second most powerful card in the game you'd give it to him and he'd give you a, uh, a garbage card but everyone's going to have their own unique special ability and they really do vary they had a lot of variety to the game uh, but we're going to do a quick mock hand so you can see how the game works get a good feel for the game so to start off the game you're going to shuffle them up you're going to deal out each player 10 cards, aside from the leaders, then there's going to be four cards left. You're going to put these to the side. No one's going to know what they are, and that's just an added little mystery bonus to the game. Next, you're going to put your politician in the center of the table. You're going to mix it up. You're going to put one down here that's going to be random, and then each player is going to get two cards. Now, 
When it's your turn to pick, you are going to have the option. You can pick one of the cards out of your hand, or you can pick one of the cards in the middle. So we'll say this guy takes that, he discards that, this guy will be this guy. I'm not even looking at what they are because we're not going to get too in-depth because that would take a good chunk of time. Uh, and then this guy, you know what, he's not going to be that. He's going to say, you know what, i got a pretty crappy hand, I'm going to be the politician. And so he's the politician. So, everybody's got their roles. You're going to look at what your roles do. I got the Admiral. This says if I win a war this round, I'm going to score 10 bonus points. Because there is some elements of the game war in this game. Very intriguing. Next, you're going to have the Governor. This says whenever you win a conflict or war this round, you decide who will begin the next one. So normally, if you win something, you would then lead off by playing the next card. However, if you're the Governor and you win a hand, then you can say, all right, no, I don't want to lead off. Uh, I'm going to make this guy over here lead off, which is always a nice added little special ability. Last but not least, we have the pacifist over here. It says, at the end of the round, score two points per ship held by the enemy alliance, but lose two points for each ship you have. So essentially, you want the other team to have more ships in their, uh, in their victory pile, you want to call it that. So, we got all our different roles, which are really going to spice up the game. This guy is going to look through his hand, he's going to pick out a card he doesn't like, and he's going to say, all right... Let's see, I got some pretty weak cards. We're going to get rid of this 7 right here. You can have it, but obviously this is all going to be secret. And then this guy is going to hand him off the, the 5. This blue 5, which is a pretty weak card. And then you are going to start. So, you're going to look through your hand and you're going to lay down a card. So we might say, alright, this guy has a 3. Now he's going to lay a 3 planet. Now how this works is, what you're supposed to do is... Uh, you're not actually supposed to lay down a planet card if somebody else lays down a planet card. If you have anything else, you're supposed to lay down that. So I can't lay down this planet, so I will lay down this... Uh, oh, that's a good one right there. I'm going to lay down this seven... Oh, I believe that's industry. So now, right now, he is winning this battle. So this guy's like, all right, I need to step up and help out my teammate. So we look at what he's got, and he's got, all right, I got an 11 right there. You know what? I'm going to lay down this... 10 right here and he's got his 10 next this guy's like all right i need to step up and i need to win this battle but i'm the politician so i can't help out my teammate so right now he wants to lay anything less than a 10 so he is going to lose this battle so he'll lay this nine right here and these guys are going to win this set you're going to set it over here, face down. You don't get a look at what's in there. And now, since uh, this guy won, he's going to lead off. And he's going to look through his hand. He's going to lead off. And you're going to rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat until you get to the end of the game. Now, once you get to the end of the game, you're going to, you and your opponent, or you and your teammate, are going to look through your piles, and you're going to see what you have. So let's just say this is all the cards you have. What you're trying to do is, well, first and foremost, the greens don't matter. Unless, of course, you're playing as the pacifist, which is a special ability. So that one doesn't matter. So you're going to look at this, and you're going to score points if you have a completed planet, is what it's called, I believe it is. Which means you're going to need one of each color. So right here, I have a completed planet. I'll look, I'll look to see, and I have seven points. Now, if I have, let's say, these two, and I don't have a red I'm going to gain no points. I don't get any of those stars, which kind of stinks. But you're going to play over three rounds, and the team that gets the most points is going to win the game. And that's how Conquest of Orion is played. All right, Conquest of Orion from Escape Velocity Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros. Let's go over the cons. First on the con side, let's get the obvious one out of the way. This is a four-player game. You can't play with two. You can't play with five, seven, three, any other number. It is for four players. So if you don't have consistently four players playing or you have more than four players, this probably won't be the game for you. Also, the game is not going to be for everybody because it is a trick-taking game at its heart, which means it is a team game. Uh, and also, it's a trick-taking game, and it, it is that. I mean, some people like deeper strategy, and you're going to get some strategy here. You're going to get more strategy than you're going to get in 90% of trick-taking games, but it's still just that. Moving on to the pros, though. I love Conquest of Orion. I really enjoyed this game. Now, I love Euchre. But if I never played Euchre again, and I played this every single time, I would not complain. Uh, just because 
there's so much different stuff thrown into this game, and there's so much more thinking than in, in your normal trick-taking game like Spades or Euchre's like that. Normally you look at your hand and you say, okay, this is what I got, this is what my game plan is going to be. No, 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 not in this game. You're going to get your hand, and then you're going to get a leader, and the leader can completely change what you're trying to do. And then not only do you have to completely change what you're going to do because of your leader, you have to look at your teammate's leader, and then everybody else is going to have a leader. So you're going to be like, whoa, there's so much stuff that is going to be going on between them. Also, the ships, which act as the trump, so to speak, are going to have special abilities too, and sometimes you have to worry about, all right, if I lay this card, there's a chance that this card hasn't been laid and he can just destroy my really powerful card, but it's only a slight chance, and there's a lot more thinking going on in this game than your typical trick-taking game, which I really did enjoy about Conquest of Orion. Uh, I also enjoyed the artwork. The artwork is top-notch. I thought it was outstanding. It really helped me get into the space theme a little bit. Uh, overall, Conquest of Orion, if you're looking for a, a trick-taking game or a kind of team game, if you, if you have a lot of couples nights where it's just you and another couple, this is an outstanding game to check out. I cannot recommend it highly enough. It is going to be on my shelf for a very, very long time. I don't see it coming off anytime soon because I really did enjoy Conquest of Orion. This seems like your cup of tea. Check out the King's starter link below Tom Bowers Game Corner sent you. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your time, YouTube. That was a review for Conquest of Orion. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner. Also check out BoardGameExchange.com, the nationwide board game rental service.